To publish an Android app to Google Play, you must create a signed APK file with a unique package name. Android Studio and Android Eclipse both have ways to export and sign an APK automatically. This way you don't have to do anything complicated or use third-party software to sign your APK, which you may have read about online. It is extremely easy to do it through Android's official IDE. Keep in mind that the key store you create always has to remain the same for that app. It is used to sign your APK and obviously it has to always be signed the same. So make sure you have at least one backup of it. The package that you use for your app also has to be unique. Every app on the marketplace has to have a different package name. So if you update your app, it has to have the same package name as before. After you upload the app, you can never change your package name unless you want to upload it as a new app. The typical format of a package name is your domain name backward and then the name of your application. For example, my domain name is mikeyworski.com, so my package name would be com.mikeyworski. and then my application name. The version code that you use for your app has to increase every time you update your app. The first time you upload your app, your version code will be 1. It doesn't have to be, but it should be. And then the next time it has to be greater, so it will be 2, etc. You cannot go down in your version code, and you cannot let it be the same. The first part of this video is going to be in Android Studio, and the second part is going to be in Android Eclipse. So I'm going to start by showing you how to find and change your package name in Android Studio. You have to start by opening up your Android Manifest and your build.gradle file. If you're under the project organization right here, the Android Manifest is under your project folder, inside your app folder or whatever you renamed it to, then inside your source folder, and then inside your main folder, and then your Android Manifest is right there. The build.gradle file is the one that's just inside the app folder, not the one outside of it. If you were under the Android organization, the manifest would be inside the manifest directory, and the build.gradle file would be under the gradle scripts directory. Make sure it is the module build.gradle file that you open. Both of these files contain your package name. In your build.gradle file, it is your application ID, and in your Android manifest, it is your package. In order to rename your package, Find your package under your Java folder, or if you're in your project organization, it'll be under this Java folder. And if all you want to do is change the last part after the last period, you can just right click, go to refactor, and then go to rename. Make sure you click rename package, and then you can call it whatever you want. Click refactor, and then it's almost done. Notice how it changed in the Android manifest, but it didn't change in your build.gradle file. So you'll need to change that yourself. And then it's going to give you a little prompt up here to sync it. Just click sync now. And then it all should be done. But if you want to change the middle part or any other part of your package name, you can do this. Go to the gear icon and uncheck this box. That way you can see the individual folders here. You can right click on whichever one you want to rename. Let's say I want to change it from Mike Yorsky. Right click, go to refactor, rename. It's the same process. Click Rename Package, and then rename it to whatever you want. The same thing happened. It renamed in the Android Manifest, but it did not rename in the build.gradle file. So you have to do that yourself. Change it. Click Sync Now. Wait for the changes to happen, and then it'll be done. You can also look at your class files. They should all say the package they're under at the top. Now if you want to change your version code and version name, you have to open up your build.gradle file. In the same place you found your application ID, you can look for your version code and your version name. You can leave them as they are or you can change them if you need to and do another Gradle build. Now I'm going to show you how to generate your assigned APK that you have to upload to Google Play. In Android Studio, go to the Build tab at the top and click Generate Signed APK. Here you'll have to do two things. You'll have to use a key store and you'll have to use a private key. A key store can store many different private keys. The private keys are used to sign your application. The key store saves those private keys. So not only do you have to have the key store file to sign your APK, but you have to know which key to sign it with to keep it consistent. It is recommended that you use one key store for all of your apps and one private key for all of your apps. That is assuming you don't share your app with other developers. If you're sharing your app, you should create a different key store and a different key. The reason is because you don't want to give them access to be able to sign a fraudulent app but you should know that you can create a new key for each individual app. You can even create a totally new key store for each app, if you want. But in my opinion, you should use one key store and one key for all of your personal apps. The ones you're selling or giving away should have their own unique keys. 
If you want to use the same key store you've already created to update your app or keep the same key store going for all of your apps, then click choose existing. Then choose that key store you've already created. But if you've never created a key store before, then click create new. So type in a location or click the button on the right side and navigate to a directory where you're going to keep all of your key store files. Keep them all in the same place and remember you have to back them up or else you can't update your app later if they get deleted or go missing. So now create a password to protect your key store. Now you need to create a key. The alias is the name of the key. The validity, just make it whatever you want. Now you have to create a certificate, and Android recommends that you keep the same certificate for every single app. Click OK. And you can see that after we created that key store and that key, it automatically filled in the information for our key alias, which is our key name, and it left our password typed in as well. If you chose an existing key store, these two fields will be blank. So you'll have to fill out the information yourself depending on what key you want to use. Remember that when you're updating an application, you have to always keep the same key. You can click this button on the right side to choose an existing key. Or you can create a new key if you want to use the same key store but a different key. You may want to check Remember Password, click Next. In my case, I've created a master password to access the password database. You may or may not have done that. And if you haven't done it, you may want to do it now. Now you just have to choose a place for your APK to be located. By default, it's going to be in your project folder. You may want to change that by clicking this button, choosing a different place on your computer. Once you've done that, just click Finish, and it'll export and sign an APK for you. After it's done generating your APK, it'll bring up a little dialog and let you show an explorer. Choosing that will bring you right to the file generated. By default, it is named appreleased.apk. You can Google how to change the name of the export file if you want, or you can simply just rename it in Windows Explorer. Rename and do test underscore APK. You can name it whatever you want. The name has no dependencies. So that is your APK file that you will upload to Google Play. Now moving over to Eclipse, and I'm going to show you how to generate a signed APK in Eclipse. There are no Gradle files in Eclipse, so you can just open up your Android manifest, which is right in your project folder. Android Eclipse has this nice little GUI where it'll show you your package name, your version code, and your version name. You can also look at the raw XML file by choosing one of the tabs at the bottom. Choose Android Manifest.xml, and here's the raw XML file. Here's your package, your version code, and your version name. Just like Android Studio, you can change your version code and your version name by just typing in something different and saving the file, and you're good to go. If you want to change your package name, go into your source folder, right click on your package, Go to Refactor, Rename, and then Rename Your Package. Click OK. Now you can see that the actual package is renamed, and the package declaration at the top of the classes are also renamed, but the package name in your Android manifest is not renamed. So you have to do that yourself. Type in the new package name, and click Save. Click Yes. And then you might get an error. Go over to your activity class, and the line that's underlined just delete it. It is trying to import your r.java class and it does not need to do that. The error is because it's referencing your old package name. If you change the package name in the Android manifest first and then refactor the package, you won't get an error. Now to export the file as an APK, right click on your project folder, go to export, go under the Android directory, and choose export Android application. Click next. Make sure it's your project, go to next. All information about the key store selection was in the Android Studio part of this video. So if you don't know what to do, go back and watch the first part. Once you've selected or created your key store, click next. Assuming you chose to create a new key store, you will also have to create a new key. Here's where you do it. The alias is the name of the key. Enter your password. Confirm it. Make the validity 100 years or whatever you want. This is your certificate, just like from Android Studio, so make sure it's the same for all apps. Click Next. But let's go back for a minute. Assuming that you used an existing key store, this is the screen you would get to. You have the option to use an existing key. Remember that if you're updating an application, you should use the same key you've already used. So click on the drop-down list for the aliases and pick one that you've already used. And then type in the password for it. Or if you're using the same key store but you want to create a different key, you can go to create a new key, 
go to next and then create your new key. This is the final screen you'll end up at. Here you want to type the location and file name of the APK you want to generate or you can just go to browse, choose a location, choose the name and then type .apk. Save and the generated APK should go into this location under this file name. Click finish and your APK should be where you chose. Now you need to create a Google Play developer account, so go to the link in the description. Make sure you're signed into the correct Google account, because that will be the one used for your developer account. So sign in, check the box that you agree, and keep note that you will have to pay $25 to make a developer account. It's a one-time fee. Then continue to payment. Here's where you'll have to set up the Google Wallet in order to pay that $25 fee. You'll have to have some sort of credit card in order to pay this. Once you've filled out all the information, click Accept and Continue. The last thing you'll have to do is complete your account details. Once you've done all that, you can go to your developer console and upload your application. So here's your developer console. If you want to upload a new application, go under the tab All Applications. On the right side over here, you can go to Add New Application. Click that. Fill out the title. Now you have two options. You can go right to uploading the APK, or you can prepare the store listing details. It doesn't matter which one you do first. So I'm going to go to Upload APK. So here is where you upload that APK file that we generated in the first part of the video. Click this, and then you can browse for your APK or drag and drop it here. Now you can edit your store listing, fill out everything on this page, and then you can finally go to Pricing and Distribution. Here you can decide whether your app is going to be paid or free. Remember that a free app must remain free. Once you publish an app as free, you cannot change it and make it paid. But you can do the reverse, you can go from paid to free. And you can always do in-app purchases if you want to. And if you want to do a paid app, you also have to set up a merchant account. That's just so that Google Play can pay you. Then you have to set up which countries the app is available for. I typically select all countries. And then scroll down and check the boxes that need to be checked. Each of these three sections need to be completed in order for you to publish your app. APK, store listing, and pricing and distribution. Once you've finished a section, the check mark will go green. Once all three are green, you can publish your app. On the top right of any of the pages, you can go to publish app. This button will be enabled when all the sections are completed. If a section is not completed and you're not sure why, make sure that you complete all the fields with the star beside it. If you decide that you don't want to publish your app just yet, you can save it as a draft, or you can delete it. And then you're done, that's all there is to it. Now I just want to tell you guys how to back up the files that you need to. If you're publishing an app to Google Play, you're getting at least a little serious. So keep in mind when you switch computers or clear your hard drive, you may run into problems with continuing development on your app. This is because in order to open your app in Android Eclipse or Android Studio, you need to keep the same ADB key. So when you switch to another computer or clear your hard drive, you need to remember to copy your ADB key over to the new hard drive. So navigate to your .android folder. This is the path to get to it. It's in your hard drive, then your users folder, then your username, and then your .android folder. Here it is in plain text. Now I suggest backing up this entire folder, but really all you're supposed to need are these ADB files right here. And I also recommend backing up this debug.keystore file. This may also be called debug.jks. When you run your app directly from Android Eclipse or Android Studio to your phone, it is by default signed with a key from the debug.keystore file. And at some point, if you switch computers, you won't be able to run that app on your phone because the debug.keystore file will be different. So make sure you copy this one over whenever you switch computers or hard drives. And if you want to manually sign your app with this debug.keystore file, I'll leave the information for how to do that in the description.